Good morning. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 96, O sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous works among all peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. We're going to continue praising God with a hymn. Maybe not a new song, as the psalmist suggests, but a song that reminds us of the enduring love of God. And it reminds us that every day that love is new to us and refreshes us and remains with us as we go about our daily lives and tasks. New every morning is the love. And if you'd like to follow it, it's number 137 in Singing the Faith. A few verses now for the, from the first letter of John, 1 John 5 and verses 1 to 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world, but the one who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Amen. Now let us pray together. Loving God, we worship you, we thank you and we praise you for your continued presence with us every day of life. 
and for your love that surrounds us always. We know that we are so often undeserving of that love and forget your constant presence. But still you love us and stay with us. Creator God, we worship, praise and thank you for this amazing world in which we live and for giving us such a trusted place within it. We praise you for the ongoing and evolving beauty of your creation and for the bounty of its pro produce. We know that we abuse or misuse your wonderful world and its resources, but still you love us and trust us to care for it and tend it. Mighty God, we worship, praise and thank you for your power and might, which are so far beyond the realms of our understanding. And yet, you know and love each and every one of us as individuals. You know our thoughts, our joys and our fears. Your hands flung the stars into space, and yet they reach down and carry us through life. Generous God, we worship, praise and thank you for all that you give to us, but most of all for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, for his miraculous birth, for all that he said and did during his lifetime, for his death and resurrection, for his devotion to you, his love for the people, for us, for allowing him to die for our salvation. Help us to follow his example and to share his gospel. Father God, we worship, praise and thank you and ask that you will hear our prayers, for we ask them in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Kath Jones is going to bring to us the gospel re reading for today. And that will be followed by a reflection from the Reverend Trevor Capstey. Today's reading comes from John chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. Amen. Good morning, friends. It's good to be with you again. We're thinking about the passage from John's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. It follows on from last week's Gospel reading, where Jesus is talking about uh, the vine and the branches. I am the true vine, and you, he says to his disciples, are the branches. And so our reading continues, really, with some of those rich images and understandings in the passage. 
I'm particularly struck and I want to focus today on this um, on I have called you friends I no longer call you servants said Jesus to his disciples I have called you friends friends we all need them and our lives are blessed by having them some people seem to have lots and lots of friends perhaps others only one or two but those one or two can make all the difference just pause for a moment and think about some of the friends and some of the friendships you've got. What do they mean to you? Can you think of ways in which you are blessed through these friendships? And think of the qualities that go to making up a good friend. What are some of the positive qualities you need in a friend? I guess loyalty, supportiveness, love finding people who can give advice and maybe take advice people who are honest with you people who are just good to be around in whose company you can relax and uh, have a joke and have a laugh there are quite a number of um, sayings about friendship as well aren't there a friend is someone who knows all about you but who loves you just the same is one that comes to mind. We have in our house um, a little plaque which says, and I'm sure it must have been made or bought in the Lake District, you'll understand in a moment, a friend can't always stop the downpour, but they'll always join you for a walk in the rain. It's wonderful if we have friends like this, it's wonderful if we can be this sort of friend for others. I like to think of the word friend as applying to Jesus. For me, Jesus is the great friend and he reveals God, who is the great friend for us all. God in Jesus is a great friend for us and offers that for every child, man and woman in our world. What a friend we have in Jesus, we sing in the words of the old hymn, don't we? And here in John chapter 15, Jesus calls his disciples his friends. I no longer call you servants or slaves, I've called you friends. So we have that image of the vine and the branches in John 15, 1 to 8. And the image and the, the richness of that word abiding, remaining, uh, staying connected, if there's going to be growth, if there's going to be fruitfulness. And in these uh, words, uh, passages, uh, the passage verses from 9 to 17, we've got a number of um, phrases and words that describe or try to understand what eternal life is is all about because John uses that uh, expression eternal life much more in his gospel than we find it in the first three gospels they tend to think of Jesus message of being about the kingdom of God the kingdom is like such and such but in John's gospel you can almost replace the phrase kingdom of God with that of eternal life relationship with the father and the richness of that friendship is one of the words that is used here in John 15 to describe what eternal life is really like. Eternal life we should think of not as something beyond death first and foremost, although it is that, it's a quality of life that God offers us and starts here and now in this present existence. And a life with the quality of eternity about it because it's God's life, God's rich life. And so words that reflect that eternal life are words like abide, stay or dwell or remain, depending on which translation you read. We, that Greek word for abide or remain or dwell occurs no less than 12 times in the first 16 verses of John chapter 15. It's about a permanent loving communion and communication with the Lord. Eternal life is a gift. John the Gospel writer saying, a believer lives in Christ and the living Christ lives in the believer. A connection 
is strong and must be maintained. Another phrase is that an image of uh, mutual love. There's a bit here about obeying commandments. We seek to obey Christ's commands, just as Christ obeys his Father's commands. The giver and the gift are identical. Christ is always present as gift and as one who is to be obeyed. And there's joy, the word joy, the expression of joy. Jesus brings joy into people's lives, into the world, and the believer can share in that joy as well. But friendship, friendship's the word that we're just focusing on today. A lot of the great uh, people of faith in the Old Testament scriptures or the Hebrew scriptures are often described as the servants of the Lord. We can think of people like Moses and Joshua and David and, and others, plenty of others. I think there's only one Old Testament character who is described as a friend of God, and that is Abraham. Isaiah 41 verse 8 refers to him in those words. But Jesus is saying to his disciples, in effect, I've got something even more wonderful uh, for you now. You're no longer mere servants. You are friends. You are friends. You are my friends. Jesus is offering an intimacy with God that not even the great people of faith in the Hebrew scriptures had encountered before Jesus came into the world. There is a background to an understanding of friendship here, I think. Um, the scholars tell us that in the courts of the rulers in the ancient world, whether it's uh, Roman emperors or Middle Eastern kings, there would be a very select group of the friends of the king or the friends of the emperor. At all times, these friends would have access to the king. The king might talk to them first thing in the morning before he even talked to his generals or his uh, statesmen. The friends had the closest and most intimate connection with the, with the monarch or the emperor. Jesus says John in the gospel, or Jesus says in John's gospel, that we, as his disciples, are called to be his friends and the friends of God. What a wonderful offer. We no longer need to gaze longingly at God from afar. We're not like slaves either who have no rights at all about entering into the presence of the master. Jesus is inviting his disciples, his followers, into an intimate friendship, connecting us to a God, a heavenly father, who's no longer a distant stranger, but our close friend. John Pritchard, the Anglican bishop, in one of his books, a book entitled Living Faithfully, he writes that friendship is a key that fits the lock of Christian faith almost perfectly. And he mentions a friend who uh, uses the theme of friendship as a way of explaining God's big story to children. And so we have, from the beginning of the scriptures to the end, aspects of friendship. Creation, Genesis 1 and 2, is about God making friends. And then from Genesis 3, we have the fall and its consequences. Friends fall out. And then the story of Israel in the Hebrew scriptures is of friends who keep trying, often failing, but who keep trying. And then we have Jesus, God's greatest gift to the world, the best, best friend. And through the ministry of Jesus and the gift of the Spirit, the church is created we have friends together. And then the church has the mission, the task of proclaiming to the world God's new creation, when God will be all in all and we shall be friends forever. So the whole Bible story can be seen as God searching out his people in order to bring them back into friendship. A friendship which from God's side has never, ever wavered. You'll know of the Christian denomination called the Quakers. Sometimes when we have the chance, Janet and I, 
uh, on a holiday or a Sunday off like to share in Quaker worship of silence. And you'll know that the Quakers have as their proper name or title, the Society of Friends. It's a lovely name, the Society of Friends. And actually the whole church, the wider church, is the society of those who've been blessed by the friendship of Jesus and want to offer that blessing to others. So let's just be grateful and grow deeper in that friendship that Jesus invites us towards. We are his friends. He invites us into that deepening, transforming friendship. We're glad to say and sing, what a friend we have in Jesus. But we're also challenged to ask, what sort of friends does he have in us? God bless you. Catherine Price is now going to lead us in prayers of intercession. And then after that, we can join in singing that most famous hymn, Love Divine. If you'd like to follow it, it's number 503 in Singing the Faith. Almighty God, you sustain the whole world with your mighty power. Thank you that we can come to you with our concerns. We lift India to you, Lord Jesus, facing a deadly wave of the coronavirus. Help them to get all the medicines, oxygen and bed spaces in hospital for all who need it. Bring relief and healing to those who are suffering and comfort to those who grieve. God, we bring to you our brothers and sisters undergoing persecution in countries such as North Korea, Nigeria, China and Iran and many more across the world. We pray for them for, for strength, for wisdom and comfort. And we pray too that God, you will protect them, that you will send your angels, you will send your miracles, please, and surround your people with your love. We bring to you also our government. Lord, we ask for wisdom for them, for integrity, and we pray that they will act in truth. Bring your blessing upon them and upon our country. We pray also for each of us as life gradually returns to somewhere near normal, that we will live without fear, that we will be able to put our trust and our hope in you alone, that you will be our vision before us. And we pray for all those listening today who are sick, that God will bring healing of mind and of body. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Thank you to everyone who's taken part in the service today and who have arranged the technology. Let's join together in seeing the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>